Hello friends, how are you? Vladimir here with you. And this is the weekly review for the last week of August 2012. Before we start, I would like to share with you a few things. Lately, uh, when I say lately, I mean the last um, two months, two and a half months, I got some emails, some questions about the summer, how to, to trade in summer, and some uh, followers say that their results are not so well and their uh, trading strategy are not doing so well and well I want to share with you uh, something you know I always uh, give you my honest opinion and I always give you the uh, always tell the truth and the same now uh, sometimes in trading life it's not all pink sometimes we have to accept losses. Sometimes we have to uh, to wait. Sometimes we have to trade and to finish a month or two with break even. It's part of trading. You cannot, you just cannot only profit. It's impossible. Right? And sometimes, like in this summer, with all the speculations and with all the zigzag moves, Sometimes some periods will not be the best. What once the, the the moves happen, once things start to make the move, you close uh, your trades with profit. All I always say proves itself again and again and again. Patience pays off. Right? Do not think that every week you can make profit. Do not think that even every month you can make profit. Right? Sometimes you have to know when not to trade. When trade less. And sometimes when to trade more. Why do I tell you that? Well, uh, on June and July, I personally also experienced pretty quiet months. Some, uh, there were some losses, some profits. Uh, not, the total was not big profit. And August started the same way. But now, when August finished, finally, when moves happen, and that's just the beginning, because we'll, there will be much more moves soon, we started to gain our profits. All the, the, the trades we, uh, we waited for, we started to cover uh, all profits. And I do want to, uh, to share with you, uh, pay attention. That's our investor style, for example, from the from the club, from the uh, signals and mentoring club. And pay attention. That's the investor style account where we trade very, very, very small lot size, the minimum possible. And when we aim to make somewhere in between 25, 20, 25 to 50 percent per year, right? With very, 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 very small risks. And pay attention, that's how the account looks like. As you can see, since January this year, we are almost 20% profit. Okay? Uh, with a drawdown, I don't remember, a few, few percent drawdown and uh, the maximum. As I said, very, very, very small risk. Very small risk. And the, once, once the period comes, you make the profits. You see this, uh, this zone? That was very boring zone you see that that's what i'm talking about that's june july and then it started you see that's why i say sometimes trading is not all like bam bam up sometimes you have to go through periods like this you cannot run away of that and you have to accept that and that's why i say friends patience pays off always just accept it and don't, don't fight it. And don't feel bad if you finish one, two, three, four weeks or even two months with break even or small profit. Don't feel bad of that. When the right time comes, you will make your profit. Just give the market the time to make the things it knows. Sometimes there are boring periods. Right? And the same if you trade regular, for example, not investor style, also. You can see sometimes we lose. Sometimes you can lose. Sometimes you can lose. Okay? But in general, in total, you will just, you see, sometimes loss, loss, loss. Okay? 
Sometimes you just have to go through that big loss. But when the right time comes, you get good run and you return to profits always. That's why I say patience pays off, friends. Just remember that, accept that, and let the market do its job. And now let's go for this week opportunities. As it seems again and again and again, the market is trying to move higher based on words. Does Bernanke need to come with QE number three? Well, more and more members say yes, but I don't think it's going to happen. There is no reason for QE number three. There is no real reason. And well, I don't think Bernanke will come with Q number three. And even if he comes with Q number three, I don't think that it's going to make a real impact. It will for the short run, not for the long run. The long run, it will cause bigger problems uh, for, from my point of view. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I think. The biggest problem we still on is Europe. Still Europe. And there are rumors now then the Central Bank of Europe is going to limit the bonds rates and well we all know what multiple intervention into the market could make right that's why I think uh, the situation that's what I say always the situation right now is not clear everything is based on the rumors yes no no yes maybe but right if no real action will happen or if action will happen but it will not help we all remember how aggressive the market knows to be right now there are no signals is going to happen immediately and as i said i believe it's going to happen somewhere in between middle of september to middle of october maybe i am wrong that's my expectations and because this is a longer run we still need to, to find opportunities for the short run. The things we were looking on the previous week, uh, weekly review, turned to be very, very profitable. Now let's see what can we enjoy from this week. The things mainly we talked about were the Canadian yen, right, to make to go and sell. We were talking about longing the Aussie Canadian from here. This was the previous uh, weekend, longing to the resistance, while uh, you can see target reached. Uh, we were talking about the euro sick right also uh, make the job the first uh, resistance steel could push higher we will discuss about that and uh, uh, another opportunities we uh, we have had like the canadian and some more and let's see what do we have this week the first thing i have on my list is well shorter run and that's oz against the kiwi that's a weekly chart and we can see on the weekly chart that the pair is still on an uptrend could it push lower to test the weekly trend line you see that powerful very powerful trend line and it could be like here or a little bit lower right could the weekly chart go and push lower definitely but pay attention to what happened on the weekly chart we had a marubuzu well we get one two pips uh, three pips uh, spy here below but it's nothing on the weekly chart let's go for lower time frames and see the opportunities we have now I will I want you to pay attention for another thing friends you see this trend line where are the prices right now they test this line again let's go for the daily chart and see what we have here pay attention what another another thing on the weekly it's on the 20 may of the weekly right RSI on the 50 uh, and MACD on the zero it's time to decide up or down for the market this is the daily chart daily chart oops that's not the line sorry on daily chart we can see that we have a trend line and the prices are right there right right there it means we can go and break through or we can make a retrace now I, I want to put here two scenarios scenario number one if it breaks down if it breaks down and hold close below it makes a close below retest this trend line and the retest does not close above again that will give us another wonderful sell call that the pair 
is going down down as to 126.60 or even down to 125 again this is the first scenario the second scenario is we return from here for a buy could it happen oh yes now let's see how can we join that on the four hour chart right, on the four hour chart oops, sorry we can see we have few supports we have a range of support here right here and the last one is here this is the last one the 127 60 127 70 that's this one we have a continuing divergence forming on the MACD on the biggest part and now another one will try to form itself here on the last part I think that before the market will break down it has to retrace up first of all and that's where we can try to enjoy from the up move the risk we will take if the prices reach this area somewhere in between 127 128 to 127.60 is a 40 pips range and create a bullish candle pattern with uh, MACD to uh, turn up again and makes bullish slope that will give us a bullish call with a first target at this resistance right and probably the 20 ma of the four hour chart and the second target here on the bigger uh, trend line we have a very nice buy opportunity for despair with a stop below the 127.60 i would say like 15 20 points below just to protect this could be a very interesting opportunity oh, that's our bullish scenario we have bearish one of the daily trend line breaks and we have a bullish one if uh, it stops and make the retraces signs with a bullish candle and the MACD turns bullish slope and that's our buy call with a uh, well conservative first target and much longer, longer second target we can go and have wonderful trade that's the first one to uh, the first trade, the first opportunity we have. The next one also involves the OZ, and that's the OZ Kiwi. As you remember, I've been talking about this pair not once. We are going for a down move, and we got the down move. Now we are on a support. We are now on a support. Now pay attention, friends. Um, I still think, and I will, I will not be surprised, if the pair will push to 098 or even here to 097 I will not be surprised all right and I will explain why first of all that's where the divergence started as you can see right here this top right that's where we got our divergence started here okay prices could push lower we got the first trend line which should take us up to this level and we are almost there but we also have much bigger trend line this one remember this one the biggest one the deepest one all the real lows and these lows can take us back to the 200 moving average or even lower okay but I do think this is the last down period this is the last period for this pair to move down and it will retrace up again soon how can we trade this pair well on the four hour on the daily chart first of all we have let's in, tighten the MACD and a little bit our side okay. uh, we can see that uh, we have a Bollinger Band duplication right we have support and on the four hour chart we have bullish divergence started to form it. could it push a little bit lower as we analyzed yes but this pair now after it did the break never re retraced to test this trend line okay it's this is the line okay never retraced to test it again yet so on the four hour charts we can start our attack right here and aim the trend line or uh, we can wait for another push and if it happens to start it lower uh, like 099, 098, 097 every hundred every figure numbered every clear number 
and start the attack to the trend line. Okay. Uh, based on daily chart, we have a Marubuzo. So after this, Marubuzo and Doji, we can get few days uh, flag, few days flag, which will take us up based on the four hour charts we discussed. Then another push down, which could be final, which would be final as we are on a bullish hidden divergence on long run. Here it will build a bottom and retrace much bigger. So what I think is look for the buy opportunities on the short run, on the four hour chart, look for sell, another sell, little bit longer for a few weeks and then buy again from the bottom that will be created here and will take us all the way up again. That's my plan for OZ Frank. And this time we don't have to pay swap. We will enjoy the swap. That's why the buy opportunities turn to be very uh, nice. <laughs> very nice. Okay, this is the uh, another opportunity we have. Uh, the next thing on the list is gold. Gold is finally making strong up move. But let's pay attention what happened. For the long run, I think gold will rise. I said it not once. Now we have a confirmation for that. The weekly trend line is broken. Weekly resistance is broken. RSI places itself above 50. And MACD turns very bullish. How can we enjoy from that? First of all, for long run, you can jump in and let it run. But there are shorter runs. On the daily chart, we can go and have Bollinger Bands duplication soon. We have resistances range, right? Somewhere between 1690 to 1710, right? That's a resistance range. And RSI is aiming the extreme above 80. That's a very, very, very bearish sign. And if that's not enough, there is a wonderful harmonical pattern, a bearish butterfly on a daily chart. And we have the same range as I said. 1690 to 1710 that's our range for a stop gold should push and make the stop around and retrace down again and the retrace down well based on the pattern it should take us again to 1625 i'm doubtful it could happen but it could but anyway we expect here at least some correction down and for a longer run based on weekly chart gold is going all the way up 1776 or 1780 will be the next important very strong uh, resistance and target and that will be also weekly bollinger band duplication so i'm bullish for the gold for long run definitely look for uh, sell opportunities for the short run and that's the four hour charts friends we have now almost we have already 20 candles right and it means it could play around, create a top here and make the retrace. The retrace, the retrace could take us down to 1660, 1650 or even 1625, which is the trend line on the four hour chart, the daily chart and also the support. So short run, sell, long run, buy. And that's pretty much clear. And with the fact that the banks are buying gold, bullions of gold, that go and be in gold it's time to be there after a boring period here gold is going to make moves right now that's our another opportunity and let's see our next one and our next one will be the canadian against the yen well we discussed about this sale we expect there and we got the sale and now there is interesting thing uh, happening we have this trend line and we have much deeper trend line here on daily chart. Each of them was not tested, right? Since the, well, we can sp make it through spikes and it's still here, right? Each of them never happened yet and should happen. Based on daily chart, two things could happen. Push up back to 81.50 or 82 plus and then a strong down move back to the trend line but how uh, based on how the chart looks like right now i think 
that we will get a fast break within two three days maximum maybe even on the first day of the next week a break out of this small range it created on the four hour charts as you can see we'll break it down soon or from here a little bit higher and will push all the way below the 200 moving average to closer to the support which should take us down again to around 78.50 or even lower to 78 and if this trend line will be broken okay this trend line will be broken then we aim the final target uh, sorry my phone interrupts me um, and if the second line will be broken this line is broken then our deepest line this one will uh, use as the final target this is the line let's make it here and you can see that okay almost here it's pretty much the same line okay pretty much the same line doesn't matter how you take it how you draw it uh, that's the area okay that's the next button below 76 so definitely a pair to watch and if it makes the break below this range we are moving down strong if uh, it makes the break below the, this line then we're moving much 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 lower and if the pair retraces from here which is for me a little bit unbelievable based on how the chart looks like but still everything could happen and if it pushes higher then we get the next divergence and then much bigger uh, turnaround so uh, that's our scenarios for Canadian Yen also very very uh, interesting pair to trade and few words about the euro dollar well of course uh, that's the probably the most uh, <laughs> the well-known the, the most talkable or how to say in English uh, pair the pair that everyone talks about it right now um, uh, and I think as I said not once the euro dollar is going to push a little bit higher it has to push a little bit higher somewhere around 126 higher than 126 closer closer than to, to, to 127 or even 128 the trend line and the 200 moving average um, and as long as the euro dollar follow me uh, follow this trend line right as long as it follows this trend line this flag pattern I will keep my bullish expectations I would look to sell the euro dollar above the 126 closer to 127 to start the sales for longer run to hold it because the euro dollar will make the down move and if this trend line will be broken then we can discuss about uh, well <laughs> we can change the expectations and go much much uh, more bearish uh, for this pair before it makes the high so let's follow I am bullish as long as the trend line holds and one around 127 uh, maybe a little bit lower uh, or even 128 that would be the uh, the target so um, well that's the main things the main things to trade we have of course other opportunities we already talked about on the previous week the oil and I tell not once I think the oil will push down well we are there and the maximum price I think the oil can reach will be this trend line which is maximum is the 100 100 which is the spike area as you can see the 100 uh, with this divergence it's not question of uh, if it's question of when the down move will happen this uh, support is the first target 93 and below and of course uh, the oil should push lower for longer run as I said not once because of the elections in US they will need to take the prices as low as possible and few words about the indices well I'm still watching the weekly uh, potential divergences I'm not sure it's going to happen now it could push higher a little bit could push a little bit higher but it's on again it's only a question of time from my point of view when down move happens as for now I, I think it's good to jump in investor style for long run uh, but not the regular attack with the risk percentage um, it might be too early and that's all for this week friends we have many opportunities and again the most uh, important thing from all uh, the saying is patience pays off remember that friends remember that it will help you with trading 
do not expect to profit every week or even every month. It is impossible. And if everyone tells you it is possible, it's not true. It's just not true. You can minimize your losses. You can tighten your losses. But you cannot avoid uh, small profits or small losses in total or break-even periods. You just cannot avoid it. It's part of it. Sometimes the market is boring. Sometimes there are no opportunities based on your uh, strategy. Sometimes the strategy is not on its best period. And that's okay. That's okay. It's like everywhere in life. Even your sport team that you lo love so much and you uh, encourage, right? Your favorite sport team. Even the, even they, like Barcelona, right? They cannot play the best football ever. Sometimes there are bad periods. The same in trading. And the same is exactly as everywhere in other aspects in life. Okay? Respect that. Agree with that. Do not fight it. And your trading will be much better this way. Thank you very much, friends, for uh, watching this video. I wish you a wonderful week, good trading, good opportunities, and good profits. Always yours, Vladimir.